Someone just said, I'm 21. I come from a poor family. I have an insane work ethic. Tell me how to get rich in the ball. Okay, let's, t let's do it. Um, so, <laughs> you know, that's what I did my famous tweet storm about. It's pinned on my profile. You should go read it. Of course, every one of those tweets can be extrapolated into, you know, an hour's worth of conversation. Um, but that's a good starting point. You kind of want to absorb all the different pieces and whatever you don't understand, I can, I can always extrapolate on much more. But I would say, you know, the first thing that this person asked about how do I get rich, they said, I'm 21 and I've been saying work ethic. It's not really work ethic that matters, you know. Unfortunately, there are people who bust their butts 80 hours a week, 120 hours a week, whatever the insane numbers are, and they don't get rich. So it's not really about hard work, right? You can work in a restaurant, uh, you know, 80 hours a week, and you're not going to get rich. So it's about knowing what to do and knowing who to do it with and when to do it. So it is much more about understanding than it is purely about hard work. Y yes, hard work matters and you can't skimp on it, but it has to be directed in the right way. And if you don't know yet uh, what you, you should be working on, then that is the most important thing to figure out. And you probably shouldn't be grinding at a lot of hard work until you figure out what you should be working on. I would say that the most important skill to uh, getting rich is becoming a perpetual learner, okay? You have to know how to learn anything you want to learn. Uh, there should be no book in the library that scares you, whether it's a math book or a physics book or an electrical engineering book or a sociology book or an economics book. You should be able to take any book down off the shelf and read it. And guess what? a number of them are going to be too difficult for you. That's okay, read them anyway. Then go back and reread them and reread them. When, you ha when you're reading a book and you're not understanding a lot of what it's saying and there's a lot of confusion in your mind about it, that, that confusion is similar to the pain, the burn that you get in a gym when you're working out. You're, but this time you're building mental muscles instead of building physical muscles. So just learn how to learn and, and read the hard books. And the problem with just giving advice saying just read is that there's so much junk out there, right? There's as many different kinds of authors as there are people. So there are lots and lots of people who are going to write lots of junk. So this is, this is an unfortunate thing that I find. I do have people in, in my life that I consider to be very well read who aren't very smart. And the reason is because even though they're very well read, they sort of read the wrong things in the wrong order. It's not even that they read the wrong things, but they read them in the wrong order. Because if you, if you start out reading a set of things that are false, or let's just say they're not even false, they're just weakly true at best, then they form the axioms that are the foundation for your worldview. And then when new things come in, you judge whether they're accurate or not based on that foundation that you've already built. So that foundation is critical. So when it comes to reading, I would make sure that your foundation is very, very high quality. And the best way to have a high quality foundation is unfortunately, you may not love this answer, but it's to stick to science and to stick to the basics. It's better to be really great at arithmetic and geometry uh, than to be like a, a deep into advanced mathematics. Uh, you know, your, your foundations are very important. It's good to, like microeconomics, I would read microeconomics all day long, micro 101. I would throw macroeconomics away because it's trash. People can't agree on it. So generally, th there's only a few few things you can read where people don't really disagree. Like very few people will disagree that two plus two is four, right? So that's serious knowledge. That's knowledge everybody should have. So mathematics is a place where you can rest your head. It's a solid foundation. Similarly, the hard sciences are, are solid foundation. Microeconomics is a solid foundation. The moment you start wandering out of these solid foundations, you're in trouble because now you don't know what's true and what's false. So I would focus as much as I could on the solid foundations. Another way to do this is to read the originals, read the classics. If you want to learn evolution, read Charles Darwin. Don't even read uh, Richard Dawkins, even though I think he's great. Read him later. First read Charles Darwin. You want to, you want to learn macroeconomics, first read Adam Smith. Uh, read von Mises, read Hayek, you know, start with the original, start with the philosophers of, uh, of the economy. Um, even, if, even if you're into communist or socialist ideals, which I'm personally not, but even if you are, start by reading Karl Marx. Uh, you know, don't read the current interpretation of whatever someone is feeding you about how things should be done and run. So if you start with the originals, with the foundations, then you will have enough of a worldview uh, and understanding that you won't fear any book. And then you can just learn. And if you're a perpetual learning machine, 
you will never be out of options on how to make money because you can always see what's coming up in society, what the value is, where the demand is, uh, and you can learn and come up to speed. Uh, there's an old model of making money, which is that um, uh, the old model of making money is like you go to school, you study for four years, you get your degree, and then you work in that profession for 30 years. But things change too fast now. So now you have to come up to speed in a new profession within nine months, and it's obsolete four years later. But within those three years that you're productive in that profession, you can get very wealthy. So it's much more important that you be able to become an expert in a brand new field within nine to 12 months than it is that you study the right thing a long time ago. All you really care about having studied before are the foundations so that you're not scared of any book. So if you go into a library and there's a book that you cannot read and you cannot understand, then you have to dig down and say, what is the foundation required for me to learn this? And I better go brush up on those foundations. Foundations are super important. Um, you know, I will bet you that uh, and I'm a little older now, so my brain doesn't work as fast as it used to. But in my prime, uh, you know, you could have come to me and uh, you know, we could have, for example, done math problems against each other, and I would have lost to you on every calculus problem. But it was a rare human being who could beat me at arithmetic. And uh, basic arithmetic and numeracy is way more important than being able to do calculus in life. Uh, similarly, being able to convey yourself simply using ordinary English words is far more important than being able to write poetry or having a very extensive vocabulary uh, or knowing uh, you know, seven different foreign languages. Um, uh, knowing how to just be persuasive when speaking. That sales skill is far more important than being an expert digital marketer and click optimizer on the internet. So foundations are key. It's just so much better to be a 9 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 on foundations uh, than to try and get super deep into things. Now, you do need to be deep in something uh, because otherwise you'll be a mile wide and an inch deep and you won't get what you want out of life. Uh, but you can only achieve mastery in one or two things. It's usually the things that you're obsessed about at that time, and it's the, and you have to sink a lot of time into it almost by definition. Uh, so you can't have mastery in everything. But if you, you if you have the foundations, then you can pick what you want to be have mastery in, as opposed to just wish that, that or just have gotten lucky that you stumbled into it at the right time in your life early on. Another idea that I got. And this may remind you of Confucius too, is that wisdom acquisition was a moral duty. It's not something you do just to advance in life. Wisdom acquisition is a moral duty. And, and there's a corollary to that proposition, which is very important. It means that you're hooked for lifetime learning. And without lifetime learning, you people are not going to do very well you are not going to get very far in life based on what you already know. You're going to advance in life by what you're going to learn after you leave here. If you take Berkshire Hathaway, which is certainly one of the best regarded corporations in the world, and it may have the best invest, long-term investment record in the entire history of civilization. The skill that got Berkshire through one decade would not have sufficed to get it through the next decade with the uh, achievements made. Without Warren Buffett being a learning machine, continuous learning machine, the record would have been absolutely impossible. The same is true at lower walks of life. I constantly see people rise in life who were not the smartest, sometimes not even the most diligent, but they are learning machines. They go to bed every night a little wiser than they were when they got up. And boy, does that habit help, particularly when you have a long uh, run ahead of you. Alfred North Whitehead said at one time that the rapid advance of civilization came only when man invented the method of invention. And of course, he was referring to the huge growth in GB, GDP per capita and all the other good things that we now take for granted, which happened just started a few 
100 years ago, and when before that, all was stasis. And uh, so if, if, if civilization can progress only when it invents the method of invention, you can progress only when you learn the method of learning. I was very lucky. I came to law school having learned the method of learning. And, uh, and nothing has served me better in my long life than continuous learning. And if you take Warren Buffett, if you watched him with a time clock, I would say half of all the time that he spends is just sitting on his ass and reading. And a big chunk of the rest of the time is spent talking one-on-one, -on -one, either on the telephone or personally, with highly gifted people whom he trusts and who trust him. Thank you.